Welcome back to Foxy TV, episode 83. If you're a regular watcher, you would have noticed that there was no episode last week. Uh, Cam was away sick all week, so I spent a week in the truck with Jake and just ran out of time and didn't get to put an episode together. To touch on last week quickly, we had a record week, 12 installs in the one week, which saw us head all around Brisbane, down to Ipswich, um, and the Gold Coast. So let's condense five days and 12 installs and a few pack ups there as well into about 30 seconds. to the current week where Phoebe and I headed to Kamir on the southwest side of Brisbane to meet with uh, local agent James Rose at a property we recently styled which, which also sold. Nice and peaceful way to start the week Phoebe, where are we this morning? We're out in Kamir, um, doing some filming. This one we installed uh, just over a week ago and it goes unconditional and settles tomorrow. So if you're after the best result for your property, it's really important to showcase its potential and to also get the best furniture in here for the price point of your home. So showing it on trend with the bright colours, it's really important. Do you a natural? Back to the warehouse and I wanted to have a chat with both Jake and Phoebe to get a feel for how the start of spring has been and what to expect in the months to come. Firstly, let's go to Phoebe to have a chat about what she's hearing from agents and also other stylists. Uh, stylists had a really good chat with um, another top stylist in Brisbane um, the other day. Um, just like us, she's super, super busy. Um, we have seen a really, really busy month. Um, so I think that's reflective on a couple of things. So this particular stylist, as well as us, we put a lot of effort in. Um, we did a lot of business relationship stuff during the, the quiet time during COVID. So I think that's really shining through. There's, I haven't actually spoken to too many other stylists at the moment, um, but we're, they're, they're not putting very much stuff up. I have not seen heaps of stuff from other stylists in Brisbane. Um, although I know that some of them will be busy as well and they're just too busy to put stuff on social media. Uh, but when I was talking to this other stylist, we were thinking basically what we, the feel that we have is that there'll be a couple of stylists in Brisbane that will shut up shop, um, unfortunately, after, after the time that we've, the period that we've just had. Um, and that's reflective on a couple of messages that I've had from other stylists as well. Um, so doing it a little bit tough um, at the moment. But busy, well, we're busy, so we, we're great. Um, and there's a couple other styles that are good too. So um, the thing I'm finding though is that a lot of the properties are coming to the market with really short notice. There's nobody who goes, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna list in November. And then we've got this huge lead time. It's people going, you know what, the market's really hot. I'm just gonna try it now because I'm not gonna wait because I don't know what's gonna happen in two weeks. So people are wanting to turn it around really quickly. Talking to agents, um, so, when I was talking to a couple of agents a couple of months ago, it was like, well, super, super busy. I don't know what's gonna happen at spring. Don't know what's gonna happen. Normally spring's busy, but um, now obviously September's just been crazy. Speaking to um, one of the agents we do a lot of work with, he is he's uh, forecasting October to be very, very busy. I know Place New Farm, um, they had, I'm pretty sure they had 100% success rate with their auctions, and they had a huge month. Um, same as all the other smaller agents who would normally be selling like two or three a, uh, a month. When I'm talking to them, they've just sold five or six this month, just gone. So um, busy month for everyone across the board. But same thing that I'm hearing that there's not very much stock out there so these agents are having to work hard to find those listings so I think that's still going to push our market along for a while. Now let's narrow our focus down to the business here Foxy Home Staging uh, while Cam takes a nap on his lunch break. September yeah so uh, it was quite a big one for us and we said uh, we broke a few of our own records uh, in particular the main one being how many installs we did in the month so we did 38 by the end of September which um, I think our previous record 
I know our previous record was 35, so that was March this year, so we, we did break that record. Um, we also did our biggest week um, that we've ever done in terms of installs. We did 12 last week, um, uh, so 12, day, 12 installs in five days, and we also did about uh, did five pack-ups in that same period, so 19 things from a truck point of view uh, in a week, which equals another record. So. Um, very busy spring and October is just based on what we've kind of got in the books at the moment locked in. It's looking like it'll go um, at least to kind of 30 installs if not a bit more as well. So yeah, number of houses out is the other record, the other kind of number that we keep track of. The previous record for us was uh, 49, uh, again earlier this year before coronavirus uh, kind of knocked us out. And as it stands right now, we're well, depending on what day you look at, tomorrow it changes again um, a little bit higher, but we're, we're at 58 houses out um, and looking to go up to probably 60 before we have a few pack ups to, to push it back down, so we've beaten that quite easily as well. We're going to spend the rest of the episode on Q&A. Question number one, do buyers sometimes want to purchase a property with your furniture and styling? If so, how much of a markup do you charge? Yes, and that happens more often than you think, but the way that we operate it is that, so we don't sell the pieces that are in the property, um, and that's what a lot of people are expecting. They think we're gonna sell those pieces and they're gonna get them at a really great discounted price. But we actually will go and buy all that stuff brand new and take it into the property for them. Um, that way they've got all their warranty, the insurance, every, like all that sort of stuff that I have to worry about using our stuff. Um, and markup, so we'll purchase it at trade price and then sell it at retail price. So there's not a markup on retail pricing at all and they still have to pay delivery. But the reason as well we don't sell the stuff that's in the house is because um, from our point of view, we then have to go and replace it. Um, so they might want a really... Cam, can you see his ring me? They might want a really good um, discount price. Uh, and if we were to sell those pieces, they probably would get that. But selling those pieces means we have to go out and purchase brand new stuff and replace it. So it's not actually worth it for, for the prices we would get. Yeah. Next question is, what insurances do you need as a home stager? I'm not going to remember the specific terminology that is used on the policies but um, yeah we, we have a insurance, an insurance broker who looks after it all for us. Um, off the top of my head we have um, you know, the, the obvious public liability sort of stuff. We have insurance for anything that's in a warehouse right here um, up to a certain level and then we also have insurance while it's out. Um, not specifically at any one house but it's um, trying to think how to, how to put it but it's if it's out at any one point in time and any particular property, say floods or some other issue, um, we're insured for up to a specific number for any particular location that isn't here. Yeah. Um, so that's the main stuff. Is there anything else? And the there's, there's things like motor vehicle insurance, we've got plate glass insurance yeah, yeah, if you have yeah. a warehouse, you've got your work cover for your staff, um, if you have staff. Sure. But then the, what we have is a small business package through Allianz and yep. they do look after us really well. I can't remember what the, the benefit of having the broker was, but there is a benefit to going through a broker and we did, that's up on one of our podcasts, I'm pretty sure. So have a look what Melissa said about going through a broker. Yep. The next question, which hooks and methods do you use to hang artwork? Oh, we've got lots of different methods. We, I reckon we should do a thing on this. Yeah. Eva should do a blog post. Um, conveniently, I'm standing here with a masonry nail. Um, so it really depends on the couple of things, the size and the weight of the artwork that we're um, hanging, as well as the material of the wall that we are anchoring it to. So um, gyp rock, which is what most of the homes that we do style are, it will either have um, one of those tiny, actually this is going to be really hard to describe, but hooks and nails um, for lighter artwork and then a screw with a jib rock plug if it's a heavier piece, so say about a couple of kilos. Um, if it's going into timber, you just need a screw straight into the timber um, and that's regardless of whether it's heavy or light, we'll just do a screw straight in. And then if it is uh, brick or double brick, which is what we did today, or cement render, um, you use these uh, masonry nails. So they just go straight in, um, go straight into the grout, they can go straight into a double brick um, and you just hammer it in and it goes in like a treat. And the final question, how do you decide what furniture to put in each property? So Eva is gonna do a blog post on this, it's coming up. Um, and I'll give you a quick brief overview. It really depends, there's a couple of things. The property, what the property looks like, um, the style of the property, all that sort of thing, because we 
I have a, a warehouse kind of full of furniture. Um, so we we don't want to force a look on, on a home. So if somebody rings me and goes, I want Hamptons, and you walk in and they've got an Art Deco style home, we're not going to force Hamptons into that home. It's silly, it doesn't work. So we will um, style the home to the, the feel that it needs to, for the home to be reflected really well. Also considering budget, also considering does the client have some furniture in there that we're going to use and integrate into with our pieces. Um, and then also, uh, preferences and feedback for the target market. So um, is it going to be an Asian demographic? Are we going first time buyers? Do we need to go trendy? Do we need to go contemporary? All that sort of thing um, working in. And final question, uh, what have you guys been watching on Netflix? Oh, Shit's Creek. Oh, you're going to have to beat that <laughs> yeah. out. With a seat. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Shit's Creek Good. and uh, probably a bunch of movies, but nothing memorable. Yeah, Shit's Creek's memorable. M yeah, movies, no memorable movies. Oh yeah, no movies. Yeah. Cool, thank you. So as we mentioned, a couple of those, they're, they're big topics and we will definitely be covering them uh, on the blog soon. Uh, Eva will be writing about them, but also probably in a future Foxy TV episode. And that's it for episode 83. Uh, next week, we've got a big episode lined up where we attempt to style or stage a home in less than 30 minutes. 30 minutes on the clock. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed the episode. Hope you're all doing well and we'll catch you in episode 84.